I know it is inappropriate to ask someone's age, so let me put this differently. How many of you here know your date of birth? Can you please raise your hand? Thank you, thank you. I pretty much see all hands are up. I will come to this issue shortly. We currently live in a world that pretty much all the products that we use on an everyday basis has a number associated with it. Be it a 80 cent alcohol rub or a $8 protein bar, $800 laptop, or even $80,000 car. For us, humans, we have this fancy eight-digit number that is associated with our life. The number that clings with us immediately after we are born and follows us throughout our life, ups and downs. This number even follows after our death. This number gets beautifully engraved in our memorial stone. Yes, you guessed that right. It is our date of birth. The implications of having date of birth are enormous. It gives us access to go to a bar and buy a beer, but that's least probably. It gives us access to what is called our first and legal identity document, which is our birth certificate. From then on, this number travels with our life and gets associated with it. And you call any document, any legal document, social security number, SACOT, driving license, passport, all these has this number engraved in it. It gives us social and legal protection. This number is what defined us as an adult on our 18th birthday. Do you know 26% of children under the age of five in the world do not know how old they are? They never had access to a, having a birth document. It is important to have a birth document. According to the United Nations Children's Fund, or UNICEF, in its latest report indicated that one out of four children in the world do not officially exist. So let's, let's crunch some numbers. The current human population in the world is 7.9 billion. Children under the age of 18 constitute 2.2 billion. That's roughly the number of users of Facebook in the world. Children between zero and five are roughly about 678 million. 25% of them constitute about 170 million. 170 million children in the world do not know their age. Or simply, to put it in the UNICEF's perspective, 170 million children in the world do not officially exist. The Birth registration in the world is currently at 74%. And in countries like Somalia, it's way lower, just 4%. Think about a country where there are millions of children and just only 4% of them are registered. This is a huge problem. Having an access to a date of birth is a fundamental human right. The United Nations Convention on the Right of the Child, Article 7, clearly emphasizes the need to have the birth registered. Apparently, this fundamental right has been ignored for several decades. The UNCRC, further in its Article 8, emphasizes the need for reestablishing someone's identity. It was in 2010 I started my PhD on age estimation from teeth. And I was shuttling between Hong Kong and England. And I always loved to travel to my hometown, which is India. So during one of my trips to India, I had an opportunity to chat with my grandmother. She was around 80 years at the time. Well, you guessed she didn't have a birth document either. And I was super excited to share about my research with her. 
I told that we are working on a method to estimate age from teeth. And she looked at me, smiled, and said, well, I know how it works. And she told me that she used to estimate age of cows in a cattle auction. And that's when I shifted my interest towards aging animals. <laughs> and this cow is over five years of age, and I can tell that based on the presence of all the eight lower adult teeth. Let's come to humans. It was in 2013, I was almost finishing my PhD. I was working on my thesis, and you know how difficult it is. It is. No. So during that time, that is when I started looking deeper into the problem, and then realized the fundamental issue with the need for age estimation primarily arises because of the poor birth registration practices in the world. I started reaching out to organizations to see how I could help my research to be able to help the children with our birth documents. Apparently, I couldn't find anything. And then, after careful consideration, I decided to start one. And that led to the Date of Birth Foundation, the world's first charity to promote accurate birth records. I set two agendas for this organization. One, in compliance with the UNCRC Article Number 7, which emphasizes the importance of birth registration. I started working at a grassroots level to understand the reason why birth registration is not practiced in several countries. After discussion, then I realized that in most of the developing countries, births do not happen in the hospital with the help of a doctor, but it happens in home with the help of a midwife. And these midwives have no clue about birth registration or even directing the parents to go and get their birth the kids' birth registered. The problem comes when the kid goes to the school, and that is when, when the school headmaster asks for the birth certificate. And that's when they said, like, oh, I don't have one. So we conducted several campaigns educating midwives, parents, on the importance of birth registration. That's just one part of the story. The second agenda I set for the organization is to reestablish identity, which is in compliance with the UNCRC Article Number 8. We started working with people, collaborating with people ranging from orphanages to immigration authorities where there were a lot of unaccompanied asylum-seeking children, and they didn't have any clue about aging them. So there were situations when they are wrongly identified as as adults, and the children were put along with the, in the adult detention camp. So we worked a lot with them, and we provided services to them. And as of now, we have provided age reports for over hundreds of children, free of cost. So those who are wondering, how do we estimate age? Yes, there's a lot of teeth there. <laughs> it's, it's a full mouth dental x-ray. Humans. We all, we all have 32 adult teeth, and they grow in a synchronized manner. What we see in the mouth is called a crown, which is white in color for most of us. But what we don't see is a root which is embedded deep into the bone. By evaluating the development of this crown and the root, we should be able to estimate age with a reasonable accuracy. But there is a technical glitch. From anthropological perspective, there is a difference in the way different ethnic groups develop based on their biological tissues development. That is the reason why you see some ethnic group people are tall, some are short, some are fair, some are dark skinned. And this affects dental development as well. So the first and foremost task is to develop reference standards or simply a blueprint for the development of teeth for each ethnic population. This is an example of such a blueprint, of a blueprint for one tooth for one ethnic population. Likewise, we have data for all the other teeth across different ethnic groups. And that takes a lot of work, thousands and thousands of records and evaluation. That's the expanse of data that we have at the moment. We strongly comply with the regulations 
set forth by major organizations like the American Board of Forensic Odontology, American Dental Association. And just keep in mind, age estimation is conducted only as a last resort when all other means of establishing a person's identity fails. So when we provide age, we just don't give them a, a date, but we also provide a range because it's an assessment. But you can't put someone's ages range somewhere between 1st of May to 1st of Jan to 30th May. That's inappropriate. You have to have an age. So that is done through mean age and their standard deviations and a lot of statistical calculation that, that goes behind the scene and the margin of errors. And this has been accepted in the court of law in several countries. And a simple search in the National Library of Medicine on this topic has like thousands of articles published. And this is just a sample of articles that I have published in the last 10 years with my team members. They're all published in the top peer-reviewed legal and forensic journals. This scientific method has been accepted and proven, although some still claim that this method is inaccurate or imprecise. The science is available. Finally, as a pediatric dentist, it gives me great pleasure when I treat children in my dental office, when I alleviate their pain, when I bring smile to their faces. As a forensic scientist, it gives me greater pleasure when I give a date of birth to a child, a date to celebrate in their life, a date to blow candles, cut cakes, a date that can secure or give social and legal protection. If you are still wondering what it's to live in a world without a date of birth, just imagine a situation when one day your date of birth vanishes from all your identity documents. How does that feel? That is exactly 170 million children in the world are facing every day. Please think about it. Thank you.